It's time to debunk all the junk of Lynette and Crook. Judge Greg DeThomasis has taken Lynette's word as truth and has emphasized to me that it's the law. He must do this. Therefore, innocent until proven guilty is thrown out the window. Along with my First Amendment rights, your First Amendment rights, my access to all of my property and to be able to drive safely on my road. We've proven that there's been seven, maybe eight rug addicts over at Lynette and Crooks, and that's not even including them, the master dealers of rugs. Remember kids, always say ugh to rugs. Time to look at aspiring adult film star, Jamie Johnson, another rug addict that Lynette welcomes into the property. As a matter of fact, Lynette meets this female on Facebook. She has no real friends. They're all ridiculously uh, Facebook individuals connected. There's no real relationship in life with this woman, with anyone at all. And yet she calls this aspiring adult star um, the godmother of the child. Knowing that this star, <laughs> Jamie star, has already had all of her children taken away from her for neglect and abuse of rugs as well. When I first met Lynette and John Crook, it was in July of 2021. They messaged us saying, hey, we're big fans. We just bought property across the street from you. Can you bring your tractor over and move a down tree? George was up north, I was down south, and we always try to be neighborly, no matter what home we're in at any given time. We try and help any way we can. And so this wasn't a huge issue to say, yeah, I'll bring the tractor over. But unbeknownst to me, they conned me. From the very beginning, it was a scam and it was a con. They told me they bought the property. They did not own the property. They had me illegally trespassing on property with my own, my own tractor, causing uh, destruction to property, moving a tree that was not owned by them. They lied from the very beginning. And in that very beginning, Jamie Johnson was with them as well. And she clearly told me that Lynette moved to Otter Creek to be next to me and George. And as a matter of fact, that very same day, Lynette takes a picture right in front of one of our many gates and entrances. You might have noticed on that photo, the date is July 18th, 2021. And there's Jamie Johnson right there. And there's Lynette right there at our gate. And what does Lynette have to say on this particular day? What the hails? My new neighbors, loving my life, paid for land, building new house, new Jeep Gladiator, and a beautiful baby girl a new beginning hearts on the mend do you understand this is the first time Lynette has ever met this woman Jamie person to person Lynette has never ever ever seen this woman in person before and this woman has a history as a matter of fact here's her mugshot remember July 18th 2021 the scam starts. She says she owns the property. She doesn't. There's no money. She has no money because she goes home after this and she puts her home in Northport up for sale July 21st. What day did she tell me she owned the property? What day did she have me come over with a tractor and trespass? What day did Jamie Johnson tell me that she was following me to Otter Creek? It was July 18th. July 18th, July 19th, July 20th, July 21st, she puts her home in Northport up for sale. And everybody's asked, how in the world did she ever even come up with money to buy this 1.66 acres in Otter Creek? Because she finally sold the home in Northport and then bought the property for an inflated price, what it wasn't worth, and then she's decreased the value of it every day since, filling it with more garbage, filling it with more trash, including the one and only godmother, Jamie Starr Johnson.
they continued to live in Northport until October of 2021, where the house actually sold. Remember, they did not own this property. They lied to me. They told me they owned it. They invited me on it. They had me trespass on it. They even said, oh, go ahead and do a video on it. And I was trespassing unbeknownst to me and could have been held liable for it because of their cons, because of their scams, because of their lies. So they sell the house and they can't move on to the property. It's not habitable at this point. Not that it actually is right now either. So they move over to Shady Oaks Campground in Otter Creek. And how do they know about Shady Oaks Campground? Because they watch all our videos. We stayed at Shady Oaks while we were waiting for all the sales to end on the parcels that were on. And so they stay there. And they end up there December. As a matter of fact, you all know Madam Mayor Therese, who has resigned and has sold the campground. Well, her husband, Brett, went down to Northport and hauled their new camper to the campground in December. You want proof? You want receipts? Well, don't worry. We've got them. And it's all being given as evidence in court to Craig de Thomasis. In court, she told the judge she's never had any rug addicts on her property. She doesn't let anybody stay on the property. She's got a child with a life-threatening metabolic disorder. Okay, well, let's see what she actually has to say. On July 15th, 2023, talking about the number one rug addict, Jamie Starr Johnson. She says, and this is Lynette, she says, I did the right thing by checking on the status of the camper that was dropped off for Jamie by her ex-husband for her to stay here and take home. Cleaning up Jeremy's mess. Oh my goodness, I can't believe this. Cleaning up Jeremy's mess? How in the world is this my mess? All right, we're going to get into it because Lynette actually says that I'm the one that told Jamie to come and stay with her. Lynette says I invited Jamie to her property. This has absolutely nothing to do with me and everything to do with these two. I can't even begin to fathom the victim mentality that can say that she has a stolen camper with a drug addict and a drug addict's boyfriend who are literally shooting rounds into the neighborhood randomly as they're high on rugs. And it's my mess? Lynette goes on to say, July 15th, 2023, down below in that little ridiculous thing there. When I realized the issue, I made every effort to help. All right, let's understand the issue. Number one, the issue is Jamie Starr Johnson or Jamie Johnson or Jamie Michelle Johnson. Yeah, there is that name yet again. Once the issue is realized that she is a rug addict and that her boyfriend is there as well and he is a rug addict and then Jamie Johnson, Jamie Michelle Johnson, runs off with Kenny Jr., another local known rug addict. Um, and then, <laughs> oh my goodness, I, I'm going to have to create a chart for everybody just to get everybody's name and all the connections. I, I feel like we're in a movie scene right now and you get to see the yarn going from here to here to here to here to here to here to here. Uh, and that there is a stolen camper. This camper was stolen from Indiana, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. It was Indiana. All right. When I realized the issue, I made every effort to offer help, programs and services, and they were denied I had a feeling in my heart that I needed to check the status of the camper. Now, let's be very clear. The only reason why Lynette checked the status of the camper is because I kept saying there was an illegal camper on the property. The camper was illegally on the property per the county statutes. Where it was, how long it was been there, which it was there well over 30 days, and how it was parked, and that's all aligned up in regards to the county statutes, the law. She thinks I know something that, that I never knew. As a matter of fact, Marli Huge kind of tipped her towards this as well. Somehow this psychotic woman over in Bronson thinks she knows something that, that we don't know either. So anyways, uh, I had a feeling in my heart that I needed to check the status of the camper. And so I did. Really, she had a feeling in her heart. 
Uh, she kept watching What the Hales and Jeremy saying, illegal camper, illegal camper, illegal camper, based on county statutes and laws. I had no idea it was stolen. Who in the world would have ever thought that plot twist was coming? But it did. And so I did. And when I did it, as I said prior, it came back stolen from a pre-owned RV lot in Indiana. Literally stolen off the lot. The camper has been removed. It's now on its back, way back to Indiana, to the police department there. And to the owner of the car lot of the RV lot, where it was taken from. It breaks my heart that this has to happen. It breaks my heart to know that the evils of this world just continue to take the lives of people every single day. And then you have the evils of this one creating all the hurt and drama and heartache. I think I'm the one. The one that is actually calling somebody out for having rug addicts all over the property when there is a child that apparently has a life-threatening disorder. And she continues to let rug addict after rug addict after rug addict after rug addict with firearms randomly being shot off on the property. Any normal person, any sane person would know this isn't okay and this must be reported. Would know that this is not all right and somebody is in danger. Any judge whether you're in Levy County or outside of Levy County, should understand that this must be reported. That this child is in danger and something must be done. And everybody keeps turning a blind eye to it. Except WTH News. Where we give you the news of our lives and how people try and interact with it. And yeah, there are those individuals that try and make money off of us. Lynette and Crook. You got other individuals from Elsie. You got other individuals from Bronson. You got other individuals that don't have enough going on in their own life that they think they somehow have to copycat and mimic what's happening in ours. Pretty pathetic. It's beyond pathetic. Honestly, it's disgusting and it's gross. And so she says that I'm the one. Uh, the evils of this world just continue to take the lives of every single I'm the evil one. Okay. Well, now she's talking huh. about in general. Then she focuses on no, you. But the reality is I'm trying to save a life. I think normal people understand that. Trying to save lives. So what this all comes down to, trying to save lives. First and foremost, George and I are trying to save our own lives from these two psychotic, mentally unstable individuals. There's a child's life that needs to be saved. And hopefully it's not too late. There's towns members' lives need to be saved. And hopefully it's not too late. And there's lives of animals. And there are so many that have passed under, under their lack of care and neglect already. But there are still those that can be saved. Rest in peace, Ty. Rest in peace. All right. Uh, let's keep going on. Um... It breaks my heart this happens. It breaks my heart to know the evils of this world just continue to take the lives of every single day. And then you have the evils of this one creating all this hurt and drama and heartache for all the people of Otter Creek. Well, the majority of the people of Otter Creek think I'm doing good. As a matter of fact, they actually like that corruption is being exposed. They actually don't like Russell. They don't like what's happening. They don't like theft. They don't like liars and manipulators. How about random bullets uh, being shot off in the neighborhood? Well, well I mean, it's Otter Creek. I mean, they like that. I mean, it's odd. <laughs> and I don't say that enough. Uh, I just have a feeling they don't like it when it's uncontrolled. You know, there's a right way. There's a wrong way. And most of the residents in Otter Creek are going to do those things the right way. But the wrong way is happening every day across the street. And every resident's life is in danger. All right, uh, creating heartache for the people of Otter Creek. It isn't just me. It isn't just the people that are being picked on. It's the entire town. I don't even know the entire town. Do you, George? We don't even know the one neighbor that lives on our road. Yeah, there's a... There's, well, remember, Lynette said that she's our only neighbor. We do have a neighbor on our road that we don't even know who they are. We've never met them yet. There's, he keeps there's, himself. There's quite a few people in Otter Creek we have not met. So it's sad. I'm asking right now is that everyone pray, pray. You got to pray just, just to make, make it today. It. I said pray, 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 pray. I haven't heard that oh song in a goodness. while. That's a throwback.
And she says, it's really all we have left at this point. You know what? She could have just decided to do the right thing. As a matter of fact, she could still decide to do the right thing. Will she? No. Absolutely everything she and he does throws them even further into this hole of despair that they've created. Literally, her running to the courthouse has gotten her into so much trouble, which she thought was going to get me in trouble. And what it did was incriminated herself. Every move these two make puts them two steps further and two feet deeper into the hole they've dug for themselves. Keep in mind, she's cleaning up my mess. My mess! She's publicly stated that it was all me that brought Jamie Starr Johnson. Jamie Starr is the adult film name. Uh, Michelle Johnson, okay? All right, let's look, take a look here. Who was it really? Well, we just happened to have the screenshots, all of them. On May 10th, 2023, what's that say there, George? Can't wait to come visit my uh -huh. girls. Can't wait to come and visit my girls. And what does Lynette respond? Can't wait for you to get here. Yep. Can't wait for you to get here. Wait, hold a second. I thought this was my mess. I thought I thought I was the one that invited uh, Jamie Michelle Johnson. It sounds pre. Sounds like it's pre a prearranged deal between Jamie Johnson and Lynette Preston. Completely and totally prearranged. Dated on May 10th, 2023. As a matter of fact, at that point, Jamie then reaches out to me because she's already prearranged her get together with Lynette. And she reaches out to me to say, hey, what is going on? The stolen camper was delivered at Lynette's turd purgatory on May 23rd. Here, take a peek. If you're keeping track of dates and times, May 10th, they arranged they're actually going to see each other. Now, it could have been arranged before that, but this is when it was publicly posted. And then on May 23rd, the camper shows up. And then I'm contacted on May 26th by Jamie Johnson. May 26th, 2023. Hopefully you can see it there. And it says, how did it come to all this, Jeremy? Can I hear your side? I've not really been online much for the past two years, so don't have time to go back and look at everything. You know that little girl is my goddaughter, don't you? Look at that last line right there. You know that little girl is my goddaughter, don't you? And if you couldn't see the date, there's the date right there. All right? My response? Very simply. Now remember, Lynette says I invited her to her property. I'm not sure how you can invite somebody to somebody else's property to live and stay in a stolen camper. But in Lynette's crazy world and mind, apparently that works. I don't know if the judge is going to claim that as truth because that's the law as well. But I have all the truth right here. And my response, May 26th at 7.20 a.m. is when I respond. 7.20 a.m. I said, two mentally unstable individuals have created a toxic and abusive environment for your goddaughter. You don't need to go back and look at everything. The only thing you need to do is be concerned about saving the child. No child should live like that. Who created this mess? Jeremy's mess? May 26th. Again, Jamie responds at 7.58 a.m. Now, this one is a long one. Oh, boy. Her and Lynette. Ugh, belong together. She says, please tell me how she's being, we'll just say it, abused, okay? We'll just use that word. Uh, it's much more friendly uh, than other words. Because I myself have only seen her happy and healthy. Well, let's hold a second. What individual is going to put abuse out on the internet? All right, remember, she's only seen her one time in her life. One time. All right, and there's some things that are going to be shared with you here in just a moment about that one time and that interaction because then a Lynette comes complaining to myself. So who in the world is going to start putting that kind of abuse out on the internet and state that, yeah, I've got all kinds of rug deals going on. Man, we're, we're, making, we're making money like nobody's business. There's so many rug deals going on over here in Otter Creek. She does announce that crook is abuse. 
That's that's true. She more than announced that. She puts that all over the internet. But huh. So how we're do, not talking so, about Crook right now. But how, how does how does Jamie miss it? I mean, this just goes on to prove how she is so disconnected. Anybody who claims to be Lynette's friend is not Lynette's friend. If they met on the internet, and that's what Lynette does, she gets in these Facebook groups, and then she tries to con and scam individuals, <laughs> and she's conned and scammed some of the individuals actually watching this video. It's crazy. And so she'll con and scam, but they don't know her. They don't know her. How could Jamie not know how much she puts online that she's being abused by Crook every day? So Jamie goes on to say, please tell me how she's being abused because I myself have only seen her happy and healthy. It's been a little while since I've been down there in person, but I'm coming down to Florida in a few weeks. All right, let's pause right there. First time she was there in person was the day that we already showed you where the picture was taken at our sign at our gate. Now, the sign was stolen by another Michelle, the underwear bandit, Michelle McCain, over in Cedar Key. That sign is gone, but the picture still exists. And all the lies that are surrounded around that picture, such as they owned the property and all of that, it all exists still. It didn't go away. So that is when Jamie was actually here. I'm coming down in a few weeks. I'll be staying with the child a good amount of time. Now, did you hear anything along the lines of, Jeremy, thank you for inviting me down. Jeremy, I think I will take your invitation and I will go stay on their property and I will have a stolen camper delivered there and it will be on that property for over a month. Did you hear any of that? Nope, nope. It literally says, I'm gonna show you right here. Right up top, George. I'm coming down to Florida for a few weeks. I'll be staying with the child for quite a amount of time. All right, let's see what else she has to say. My camper was delivered a few days ago. Hmm. Well, we got the timeline for sure. Uh, again, how is this my mess? I have no idea how any of this is my mess. Shaking my what head? My deranged head. Ugh. Shaking her deranged head. Or delusional. Delusional could be that as well. I'm looking forward to enjoying some time with her. Can you tell me what I need to prepare for? I've not been to the new property since the time I met you, and I would like to know what I should suspect. I'm definitely surprised at all this, and I don't know what to think. I'm surprised to hear you say the things that you have about what she has said about me. Okay, so what is... Lynette said to us about Jamster here. Yeah, she goes by Jamster too. Jamstar, Jamie Star Johnson, but her real name is Jamie Michelle Johnson. So Lynette tells me, ugh, when I'm on the property helping her with something, who even knows, should never even respond, should never give the woman my number, ever. I've learned that lesson. Oh my goodness, I have learned that lesson. And George and I have literally... I, let's just, I've learned that lesson, okay? And so when we get back in in Otter Creek in 2023 for the winter, she goes on to tell me how Jamie stole from her. Jamie did nothing but sleep the entire time. Jamie is a rug addict. And that's all, I did not hear one positive thing from Lynette about Jamie. I mean, let's face it. Lynette doesn't have anything positive to say about anything because she wouldn't gain sympathy. She wouldn't gain maybe a handout or a donation if she had anything positive to share. So when she meets anybody or she talks to anybody, it's all negative about everybody. You need to stay away from those kind of people in your lives, okay? All negative about everybody. You know people like that. Lynettes and Mar Marlies and, and Vic. Wikipedia's and and wiggly balls and and Lizzie's and and the list could go on and on and on. Georgie Porgies and and uh, Hemorrhoid Man and they are miserable people and they love to draw people down in their own misery. Stay away from those draining people in your life. I, I, I can't I can't stress that enough that you need to have boundaries and George is the one that's taught me because I typically trust everybody implicitly and, and I give everybody my trust beforehand and George keeps saying would you stop would you stop would you stop there has to be boundaries because I literally will give everybody the shirt off of my back versus Lynette saying that she'd give the shirt off of her back when we all know the only way she did that is when you threw dollar bills at her on a pole 
Of course, nowadays, whoo, man, even back then, I, I bet they were throwing dollars to put the shirt back on the back, okay? So protect yourself and establish boundaries. These people are draining. They will destroy you and they love to destroy others and pull you down and drown you in their own misery. So she has nothing positive to say about Jamie at all. Not a single thing. And and Jamie all of a sudden is shocked by it. Oh, I, I stole from her. I, I slept the entire time. I did nothing. That was the first time they ever met. Remember, meeting somebody and talking to them on Facebook isn't real. Anybody can pretend to be anybody in anything behind a keyboard. We call them keyboard warriors. You can call them a troll. You can call them a catfish. You can call them anything you want. But the only way you know a person is face-to-face -face and spending real time with them. I'm definitely surprised at all this, and I don't know what to think. I'm surprised to hear you say the things that you have about what's been said about me. Mainly because I never lived with them. I've only been there for a visit. Okay. And it definitely didn't receive any money from anyone on the trip. According to Lynette, Lynette had to pay for everything for Jamie. Everything. All Lynette did was just bash and bash and bash Jamie, which these two, all they do now is bash each other, which is what Lynette does in everybody in her life. Okay. Um, I had, I had uh, flights paid for. I had this trip last time. I did have the flights paid for, but it was because I was asked to come and help. So apparently somebody did pay for her flights. And I gladly in return for that. And of course, I was fed while I was there, but I had my own spending money. I never asked for anything. That woman has never been anything but supportive of me. Are you sure she was talking about me? Oh my goodness, how, how can this even be questioned? This is Lynette we're talking about. She's so two-faced. Oh my goodness. She bashes the residents of Otter Creek. She bashes her own friends, bashes her own family. George. 98% of the people of Otter Creek love her and Crook. She bashes the man love that lives her. on her property that she has the child love her. daddy. She goes on to say, I don't believe that the relationship she has is the best. Um, let's see. Referring to a Crook. Yeah. And so I'm asking, what can you tell me about the things from your point of view? How close did you all get? What have you seen? I will say, no matter what's going on, what I don't like is how public this has all gotten. Well, if you didn't want it to be public, shouldn't involve yourself. As a matter of fact, she's messaged, and I've blocked her on every platform, Jamie. She's messaged, don't show anything with me again. Well, don't message. I mean, it's really that easy. Don't message. Don't get involved. But what did she do? She did get involved. She brought a stolen camper. She... She, she went out and bought rugs with her boyfriend. And then she went, wow, 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 wow. And Gail could have gotten injured. Michael could have gotten injured. Susie could have gotten injured. Kenny could have gotten injured. Kenny Jr. could have gotten injured. Tommy could have gotten injured. Brian could have gotten injured. Uh, Tina could have gotten injured. Jacob could have gotten injured. Hold a second. Wait. Lynette says I don't have any neighbors, and I just named off all but one neighbor well, you right on this pass road. As it was happening. I could have gotten injured. The un was being fired as I was on the phone with George, and I'm going, Shots fired! Shots fired! Mm, you're driving on the road past their property. Okay. She says, I'm coming down soon to make sure all is okay with my girl. Right here. I'm coming down soon to make sure all is okay with my girl. She means so much to me. As my own children and grandchildren. Well, here's what I have to say to that. My commentary. My biased opinions. If you cared so much about kids, wouldn't you get yourself clean? I mean, why would you come down? You care so much about this child. You have come down and put the child in, and endangered the child even further. But you care so much about... Your child, this child, just like your own children and your own grandchildren, own children that have been taken away from her because she's been using rugs. Grandchildren that she probably has no access to because of rugs. If you truly care, you don't endanger a child even further. You step up and you say something and you do something about it like we've been trying here 
on what the hails, and yet blind eye after blind eye after blind eye turns to it. What is it going to take for somebody, some organization, some judge to finally do what's right and to save this child? June 10th, 2023. June 10th, right there. That's when Jamie Starr Johnson arrives to the turd sanctuary. As a matter of fact, you can see her vehicle right there. Okay. Now, what day was the camper? It was May 23rd. Mm -hmm. May 23rd, the camper shows up. Jamie shows up two weeks and I believe four days later. Okay, three, four, somewhere in there. The point is this. Levy County laws and statutes state that you can have a visiting camper on your property for up to two weeks, no longer. Now, within that statute and within the laws, that camper has to be at a certain place, certain way. There's all kinds of regulations. You can't just go and say, I'm throwing a camper right here. That's why their camper, Lynette and Crooks, is illegal where it's at and how it is right now because it doesn't follow the statutes. And then Jamie's camper is illegal. It's well over the two weeks already, and it didn't follow the statutes. So when you heard me saying this camper is there illegally, 100% it was there illegally. And Jamie doesn't even show up until two weeks plus a few days later. Already at that point, it's illegal because it's been two weeks on the property. It needs to be gone. Except there's that whole other illegal issue. It's stolen out of Indiana. Mid-July, well, well past the two weeks that a camper should be on a property with a visitor. Lynette starts posting more on all her ridiculous garbage Facebook pages, which makes her a public figure. So many fundraisers, so many Facebook pages. She's a public figure. And somebody has something to say to her on July 15th, 2023. And boy, wait until you hear her response. She says, Lynette Michelle Preston, I would have made them move it, but I would not call the police until I talked to her. Jamie has been an amazing friend to you. Don't let this ruin your friendship. Try to talk first. Now, hold a second. What's this all about? Jamie goes on a rug binge with local rug addict, Kenny Jr., whose dad is really the one that is all messed up in this area. Lynette, finally, because Jeremy keeps saying illegal camper, illegal camper, illegal camper, Lynette, under the, um, the counsel of Marli Huge, calls to check up on the VIN and finds out that it's completely and totally stolen. And so Lynette now kicks Jamie off of the property and has the camper towed away, as if she didn't know all these issues with Jamie in the first place. And Lynette's response to this person, oh, you're going to love it. You're going to love it, okay? Just so we all know, July 15th, Lynette's response, you are delusional. I'm not joking. That's her response. You are delusional. Oh my goodness, pot calling the kettle black. And this time... This is the right person pot calling the kettle black because Lynette claims that she's black. She is delusional. Okay. Now, to be clear, as Lynette has stated that her whole family is black. No, her whole family isn't black. She has a sister who is married, a black individual, and has mixed kids. That has nothing to do with Lynette at all. At all. Lynette is not black. Her family's not black. She's got a sister that married a black individual and they have mixed kids. Lynette's not black, okay? Pot calling the kettle here. All right, and um, let's see. Okay, you are delusional. Oh boy. Here we go. I went down that delusional rabbit hole with Lynette. She says, I don't know who you are, but you're a fake picture, so you're a fake profile. Jamie has not done anything for me. Now remember, I warned Jamie of what Lynette has to say about her beforehand. And Jamie's going, none of this is true. She would never do that. And all of a sudden, no, oh, hey, here we go. I mean, it's all, it's all aired out on Facebook. It's all coming out. I feel like Oprah should have been here. No, Jerry Springer. Yeah, definitely. Uh, 
Ugh. All right, Jamie has not done anything for me. She came here to my home, fought with her boyfriend for two weeks in a row. They slept for a week. They were up again, and then the ba boyfriend got sent away. And then Jamie has done nothing but run off and bring Carlos of stuff. You think I'm joking? <laughs> I think it's Carlos. Say car loads. No, no, no. We're talking about rugs, Who's George. Carlos? We are talking about rugs. <laughs> it's definitely Carlos. <laughs> All right. And bring Carlos of stuff to my property. The camper was stolen. I had no choice but to let them take it. The sheriff came out to run the VIN number and had found it that it was stolen. He confiscated it. And at that moment, I don't know who the hails you are, but you don't tell me what a wonderful friend she's been. Okay. All right. Ooh. Delusional. Delusional. But this is the Delusional. godmother of the child? She ain't done nothing for me. Friend? You better start naming the things. See, because I'm going to start doing this factual paperwork, truth telling me that's what she's done for me. What kind of friend she is, because you're out of your mind. This is no joke. <laughs> you are out of your mind, she's saying to this person. On the page that she created, oh, it was supposed to be all about Otter Creek, but all it's about is bashing people, and, and it's it's all about hating people, and that's what it is. Oh, and then she goes on to say, <laughs> oh my goodness, you know, uh, uh, reading a delusional person, calling somebody else delusional, and then telling them they're out of their mind when the person is out of their mind. <sighs> I, just, I can't state this enough. Don't do rugs. Just don't. Don't do rugs. Carpet, shag, that's great. What about rugs? Carlos? Oh, Carlos. Carlos is Carlos is my buddy. All right. And then Lynette goes on to say. Who's Carlos? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Carlos is my buddy. Don't worry about it. Lynette goes on to say, I hate people that come into a conversation that they have no blank clue what they're talking about. When we knew that camper was stolen by the things that Jamie said. No, she had no clue whatsoever. All she was doing was watching What the Hales, which she told the judge that she never watches What the Hales. She's only seen three or maybe four episodes. Under oath. Under oath, she says this. And I continue to say illegal, illegal, illegal based on county statutes. And then she checks the VIN because she thinks I'm coming after her. And yet again, this delusional woman, she sinks herself deeper in a hole, finding out that she has a stolen camper on her property. And then the fool goes and posts it all over Facebook. Like, how dumb can you be? Talk about giving the opposing side so much ammunition. Here you go. I mean, what could her lawyer be thinking right now? Because I know he's spent over seven grand just watching the videos I've been posting for the past week. Ha! <laughs> Checkmate. All right, let's see. And they have no blank clue what they're talking about. When we knew that camper was stolen by the things Jamie said. So I had the sheriff to run the VIN. I'm not going to jail for anybody. No, she's going to jail for the things she has done. Mm -hmm. You can't go to jail for what somebody else has done. Oh, well, unless your judge is Judge Craig to Thomas, and he's going to try and hold me liable for what everybody else in the world does who watches my videos. Which means if he does that, he then has to hold everybody liable for what they do and who they call and letters they write and messages they send based on the news and based on the radio, based on TV, based on every social media platform. In other words, everybody in the world is now guilty as he's attacking freedom of speech. You can't go to jail for what somebody else did. She's going to jail for what she did. All right. And Jamie said, so I had the sheriff run the VIN. I'm not going to jail for anybody, especially one that can't keep their own life freaking straight. Oh, my goodness. Pot, kettle, black. Oh, my goodness. Maybe Lynette is black. I don't know. All right. And somebody who can't keep their own freaking life straight. I'm not losing my child for nothing and no one. I did the right thing, absolutely, 100%. Can you almost see Lynette? As she's talked to texting this into Facebook, which nobody in their right mind, no normal person would ever post anything like this on Facebook. Remember, this is my mess that Lynette is cleaning up right now. It's not her mess. It's not Jamie's mess. It's the mess Jeremy made. So Marli Huge over in Bronson 
uh, the Bronson Zilla that can't even get out the front door, then tells Lynette, oh, Jeremy ran the VINs. Jeremy was on the property running the VINs. And that's why Lynette tries to get the VINs checked out. Uh, somebody asked her on her own page, uh, how could Jeremy get the VIN numbers if he wasn't on the property without trespassing? And Lynette's response is, and Lynette, the fool that she is, taking Marli Huge's advice, poor counsel, poor, poor counsel. All these people do is incriminate each other further and further and further. Well, that's kind of what my question was, because I don't think he was on my property and he didn't run the VINs. I did call the Levy County Sheriff and I asked them to please run the VIN. They ran the VIN, told me it looked okay. He was kind of a little weird, but he said it looked okay. If there was any problems, he'd get back with me in about half an hour. He called me back and he said, who's there with you? Dun, dun, dun. And I said, it's me and John Crookie. He said, well, I'm on my way over. I'm in Chiefland. And I said, oh my God. Um, first commandment, we don't take the Lord's name in vain. Um, she's or, ordained. Anybody? Ordained minister? First, com have first said, commandment? Oh my. Ugh. Uh, oh my. Ugh. Uh, it's stolen. He goes, I'll talk to you when I get there. And yes, it's stolen. They immediately confiscated it. They took everything she owned. Whatever was right around the front and the outside got thrown in the camper. Everything else got thrown in the garbage. And then this person says, Oh, 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 Lynette. Oh, Lynette, I'm glad you ran them. I'm so sorry it ended this way. You know, all this garbage is just for sympathy. You get it? It's just, well, that it's could be all, fake sympathy to see what else she would it's leak. All, it's all to try and get money, all right? Because everything in Lynette's life is about Lynette. It's complete and total narcissism. Complete and total narcissism. And then Lynette responds, Me too. One of the campers is mine. I'm paying for it every month. Not for long. I'm paying for it every month. It's mine. So I don't... So I don't have to worry about that one. But I had a very, very strong feeling uh, she was watching What the Hales and paranoid. And Marli Huge didn't help any of that. Added to the paranoia. And then post this all over. I, I just, it's unbelievable. It's literally unbelievable. I had a very, very strong feeling by what was happening with her. The things that she was saying that it was illegal. If it was stolen. Really? It was literally on her property for two months. And now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, as Jeremy is, is sharing all these things, as Jeremy is sharing the truth with the world, trying to get somebody to do something to save this child and to save the residents and to save the animals. Now she's got a strong feeling. Saying that it was illegal, it was stolen, I had to. And then the woman that absolutely destroyed her, Jeremy now has brought her into all of this. It's me. Look, it's me. It's me. Yep, it was me. They didn't have this all planned beforehand. Jamie didn't reach out to me first. You understand this is sarcasm, right? They planned this all. They reached out to me. They have a stolen camper. They're doing rugs, but it's me. How in the world is it me? I'm driving as pew, pew, pew. I'm, I can't be over there going pew, pew, pew and be driving in the vehicle coming towards it at the same time. And somehow it's always me. Always me. Jeremy has brought her into all this now, and I'm not afraid of her because I don't have anything to worry about. I was more worried about my friends, so it's better this way completely. Oh my goodness. This woman has no friends. This woman will turn on anyone and everybody at any moment in time. She has no real friends. You'll be going, what, what about Marli Huge? They're not friends. They've never ever met. Hold a second. Marli has no friends either. She literally spends all day on Facebook and spreading hate all over Levy County Facebook pages. Maybe they would be really good friends. Hold on tight, because we're going on a magic rug ride with Lynette Preston and a huge, huge post. Okay, it says, this is going to be my post for today. And unfortunately, instead of butterflies or hummingbirds, um, has anybody ever seen her post anything about 
butterflies, hummingbirds. Uh, it's always been hate about somebody. Okay. About butterflies or hummingbirds or any other wonderful Florida cracker houses, which by the way, I want to be very clear. I would not be proud to say cracker because the implication is slavery. So when you hear Florida cracker, the implication is that's the master with the whip cracking the whip on the slaves. And so I don't understand why there's any, I get that there's history and there's, you know, there, there are people who go, oh man, I love Florida cracker, da, 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 da. There's even a restaurant, Florida crackers. I don't like the implication of it at all, at all, at all. I wouldn't say I live in a Florida cracker home. I wouldn't say I'm a Florida cracker. I don't like it. I don't like it. And um, I, I think it's pretty much, it's inappropriate. Now, I realize that there are people that watch our videos and go, well, I don't like what you have to say. Well, then create your own channel and say what you want to say. We really don't care about your own offense, all right? The only person that cares about what offends you is the person who is offended, which is you. And so you really don't care about what I'm offended about either. So, um, and it's not an offense thing. It's just a complete and total inappropriateness. I don't like the whole Florida cracker thing. Uh, once you look into the history of it. And so the Florida cracker houses or anything else fun that I could put on this page, uh, which was never anything. Uh, uh, I, I again defend myself. Oh, here we go. Debunked. She's trying to debunk me. Debunked. Oh yeah, and where where did this whole stupid saying come up with? Did you bring the receipts? I got the receipts. How about you just say I've got the screenshots? I've got who's going in court going, oh I got the receipts right here, judge. Oh I got the receipts. No, it's evidence. It's proof. Where'd this whole thing come up of I got the receipts? I think from Wikipedia. Oh, okay. Well it's rich. stupid. It's ridiculously ignorant and foolish. Uh, and if anybody said that in the courts, they'd be kicked out. Well, wait, hold a second. <laughs> Not with Judge DeThomas's. He can't control his own court. Okay. They might as well say, I have the kangaroos. All right. So I, again, have to defend myself. So here I go. What you choose to believe is on you. I, nor John, do rugs. <clears throat> okay. And you realize she actually posted on the same page her rug test. And on the rug test, they came positive. up positive. Mm -hmm. That's how dumb she is. I nor John do rugs. There's no crackheads living on my property shooting off uns. Hmm. Okay, well, we've already shared this this week. Her own words talking about the crackheads doing meth, shooting off uns. So, another debunked. I guess I brought the receipts. Jeremy alleged, no, I didn't allege, I stated the truth. Jeremy alleged that there was gunshots from our property. John and I went, John and I were not home at the time. We have proof. Why didn't she say she has receipts? Where's the receipts? Where's the receipts? This is like the old 80s Wendy's commercial. Where's the beef? Where's the receipts? Where's the receipts? Okay. You remember the old lady? <laughs> Where's the receipts? No. All right. John and I were not home at the time. We have proof. We were at the doctor's appointment with my daughter. My friend was on the property. When we returned home, we found four shell casings on the ground. Pretty sure she fired off her hand on. But you allege there was... Hold a second. At the beginning of this, she said there was no one firing anything off. This is a very oh contradictory, long, long Oh, rant. my goodness. This is so bad. All right. Uh, we found four shell casings on the ground. Pretty sure she fired off her hand on what she did. And I heard it all as I was driving towards it, unfortunately, because she was having an emotional or some kind of issue. Uh, she was high on rugs. We did not fire the un. But now let me explain. We are allowed to target practice on our own property. No, they're not. They have no proper backing. They are not set up to do this at all on their property. So they cannot do this on their property. There is a legal way to do it on the property. They are not set up legally. So no, they cannot. We are allowed, we're allowed to fire uns on our property. We take unsafety very seriously. Yeah, I see, see that. I, the other, the other uh, residents of Otter Creek have witnessed that as well. As they've had it pointed at them. Um, wow. 
We brandished a gun. Again. We have two unsafes. He has one, and I have one. My daughter is never allowed to touch or play with or be in the vicinity of our uns, except uh, Jamie Starr Johnson has written that they lost the the un, and it was in the Jeep where the child could have gotten it at any time. They lost it. It was under the seat. Okay. Uh, That's coming later. Oh, okay. Well, stay tuned. It's, it's a coming. Next again, with the rugs, we do not do rugs. I've never touched a rug since I'm a very young person. I'm 60 years old. So wait, she's saying she never touched a, a rug. Well, in but the, she did it in her younger days. Well, in the psychiatric reports, she had a 22-year-old boyfriend who was doing rugs at the house with the child. Uh, but we'll get to the psychiatric reports later. Um, and, and she was dating a rug addict, doing rugs at the house with the child there. Next again, with the rugs, we do not do rugs. I've never touched a rug since I was a very young person. I'm 60 years old. I am an advocate. There we go. In the highlight. Okay. All right. Yeah, like we're going to so believe. So she welcomes these people. I'm an advocate for people to put them into treatment programs. That is my ministry and has been for years. Uh, no, she welcomes them in on her property in an attempt to get cheap labor to give them housing to let them pee in bottles and give them rotten food. That's what she does. And that's not a ministry. It's a tragedy is what it is. No one is any longer staying on my property. Jamie, who Jeremy invited, interesting, here we go, Jeremy invited, begged her to come here to save my child. You think I'm joking, right under the dot at the top. Who Jeremy invited, begged her to come to save the child. You've already seen the receipts. Uh, where's the receipts? You saw them. No one any longer staying on the property. Jamie, who Jeremy invited, begged her to come on the child. Was no longer on the property. Will never be again. I hired a couple several months ago. Well, we already talked about that couple. Several months ago to clean my property. I posted an ad just like thousands of people do. And I got responses. And they made it sound like they would do a very good job. That he was very educated in carpentry. And he could help us. And he could do the work needed. And she has cleaning business. And she likes to clean people's houses. And Oh my. Nobody could to take on that task over there. And to help people, she's reasonable and she would work with me. So I hired them. So they did many other, so did many other people in the Tri-County. Why is that a Tri-County area now? There's not Tri-County area. We're literally on the Gulf. There's no Tri-County. She working for the fish? Okay. So the Tri-County area, which I live and have multiple charges from multiple families in the area, including ex-police chief from another state who resides here near me, also had a victim who was a woman who volunteers and works with the Levy County Sheriff Department. So why am I a rug addict? And whatever else I've been called, because I, like several other people, hired them to do a job on my property. They were homeless. She knew that beforehand. Not to mention uh, 15 years in jail, 5 years in jail. But you're so concerned for this child's safety. So ridiculous. Yes, I have a huge heart. Everybody, cry, cry a tear right now. She has a huge heart. Oh. Okay, um, I have a huge heart. And when she cried such huge tears and told me she didn't know what they were going to do with their truck was full. They had no way to sleep in it. Could they please spend a, sleep a couple nights in our shed? Well, there we go. Admission again. Illegal activity on the property. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, of course I said yes. I help people. My heart is for helping people. Oh, my goodness. Once they were here and they stayed a couple days. No, it was weeks. Uh, they left a few days. They came back a few days. They left a few days. What we didn't know is every time they left, so did our belongings. How am I a rug addict? Because I allowed people to answer my ad just to sleep on my property so they weren't homeless, laying on the ground outside in their vehicle. How does that make me a rug addict? This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. These people are now caught. They're both in jail. The charges have been brought against them by multiple people in Grillcris County, Levy County, and another county in the area. Case closed. Must have debunked me yet again. Man, I can't take it. This woman debunks everything I say. Like I don't have receipts or something. I feel like I don't have receipts. I need receipts. Can somebody please get me some receipts? Ugh. 
Ugh. There's no tents hiding on my property full of meth addicts. Sorry, Jeremy. That's in your mind. There's no rug use going on on my property. Sorry, Jeremy. That's all in your mind. There's no abuse of my child on my property. Sorry, Jeremy. That's all in your mind. All of the things that this man is doing to myself and others to this town is all for money. Why aren't you people asking, why isn't he doing storage units? There's a story there. Aren't you curious? Why don't you figure it out and leave my family alone? How about she left my family alone? She stalked me here. She begged and begged and begged. She made life a living hails for the residents and for myself. And she is neglecting, if not abusing, a child and the residents and the animals that are dying on a daily basis. But she wants me to leave the family alone. Okay. She yeah. shouldn't have moved to Otter Creek to be close to you. Simple, simple solution. Everybody should always do the right thing. Oh, it keeps going on. My name is Lynette Michelle Preston. I go by Michelle. No, she doesn't. Most of her life, she went by Lacey, her stage name. And her family called her Spacey Lacey because she's such a freaking head job. And then she changes her name after every scam and every con. And now she's using her legitimate biological daughter's legal name, Michelle. Why? Because she's running from everything else she's done. Her legal name is Lynette. Pardon my accent as I pronounce her name. Lynette. It's, it's, it's a northern accent. My name is Lynette Michelle Preston. I go by Michelle as I have the day I was born. Debunked! It is my name. My daughter is a junior. So is that so hard for everyone to get? I'm sorry, Jeremy, that you can't wrap your brain around the fact because it's too little, but it's the truth. Debunked! I have proven every single thing this man has said about us was a lie. I don't know what more it takes. It's just the fact that you people love to watch people suffer under somebody else's hand and make money and then shame on you. I feel so badly at what God's going to do to you. Because nothing I can do to you on earth is ever going to compare to what God's going to do to you in the end. Well, God's word says that we should take care of the children who couldn't care for themselves. So I'm pretty sure God's rooting me on as are all the other saints up in glory going, get her, get her, get her. Now, there are those that would say, no, Jeremy, you just need to forgive and you need to move on. Do you not understand that God uses men and women to do his work? There's an entire book of the Bible, Judges. You know of some of them, Samson. They have killed and destroyed entire, entire cultures of people. They're not only men, females. Deborah was a judge. God uses men and women to do his work. Keep in mind, this is the same insane woman that wants to talk about me making money. But she stalked me here to try and get my money and use my fan base for money and promotion. August 9th, 2023. You want another contradiction? Here we go. More receipts. Okay. Do you know what really disturbs me about all of this is that he stands up in a town hall. Yeah, I did. I warned the residents of town hall and they need to be warned. They're in danger. And then he says, I've had four rug addicts struggling on my property. There's been one rug addict struggling on my property. Whoa, 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 whoa. She said over and over and over again, no rug addicts, none. And... You want a receipt? <laughs> I, I got your receipt right here. There's been one, one rug addict. Well, at least we got her to admit to one. Oh, there's been one. There's been one rug addict struggling on my property. And that was Jamie with her boyfriend. I'm pretty sure one plus one equals seven. If I'm doing Mary Mary math. Okay. And, and and was not doing rugs. Let me make that clear. Her boyfriend came to me and told me that he thought Jamie was on rugs. 
You got to stay off rugs. I know there's a magic carpet ride out there and you want to be Aladdin and Jasmine, but you got to stay off the rugs. Didn't she say okay? they both slept for a week? Yes. It all contradicts. All of everything she says contradicts. But that's the brain. That's the way her brain works. So minus that guy, he was not on rugs. I hired a couple legitimately like everyone else did off of the Chiefland Facebook post. And they answered my ad and seemed sincere. So I let them come along with another lady that works for the Sheriff's Department, leaving the Levy County Sheriff's Department. It's a volunteer that came out, sob story, da 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 lost her apartment. She literally goes, blah, 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 blah. I have a huge heart. I allowed them to come. My many families hired them to do the same work. These families included retired police. We already heard all this. Jim was so, actually a, a strong drink and a rug addict. So maybe we could straighten that out. Wait, there, now she admits three. Mm -hmm. uh, but Jeremy watches videos and he had Tony doing work for him. Uh, Tony is the individual that filmed Michelle McCain in her underwear trying to <laughs> fix my gate that no, she crashed into. No, she was trying into. to steal it. Well, she was trying to steal it. She's trying to put it in the back of her truck. Along with the sign. Yeah, she stole the sign already, and she's trying to steal the gate. Uh, Tony has never worked for me, has never done anything for me. But apparently she knows everything. She knows all the inner workings. She knows how I make money, what I do with my money, who I hire. Uh, apparently she knows everything. I, she knows way more than I do. Oh, boy. Oh, so Tony has doing work for him, and he's a he's a raro wren Attic. How does she know? Did did he do an AUA for her? Oh, that must have been. She must have done a. Yeah, there's, she probably gave him an AUA. Uh, and and oh my, ugh, shame on me for helping someone out and hiring them legitimately. I paid them and to work with me and clean my property. How was I supposed to know? I thought there was no rug addicts. This whole thing starts with no rug addicts, and now the count is keeps going. Jamie, her boyfriend, uh, Jim and Jessica, and it keeps on going. The count is going up. How was I supposed to know? It starts literally with no rug addicts, and now the count is at four. How did the other five to eight people know that they did not know? It's all stupid that he thinks he has the right to treat people like this for views on YouTube and Facebook. Disgusting. You know what I find disgusting? That an individual literally uproots their entire life in Northport where they destroyed every person around them there to try and grift, try and scam, try and con, and try and get money from somebody in Otter Creek. That's absolutely disgusting. And the biggest disgust is exploiting a child constantly online, begging for more and more and more money. It will never, ever happen ever be okay. It's horrific and it's beyond disgusting. That firearm, the un, right here, Jamie Johnson. This is what she has to say about it. They messaged me one day to look in the driveway for uh, crooks. She actually does. I love it. She did put crook right above my finger. Crooks. <laughs> for crooks un because they couldn't find it. It was under the seat. She said, really? She's one that has threatened to shoot the animals and even one day was going to snap the poor little wiener dog Tilly that they have chasing the guinea hens who were killing the roosters, four in total. And when she got a hold of that dog, I was worried she would. Told her to calm down, stop screaming, and she was not going to hurt that sweet little dog. Oh, and I almost forgot, the chicken that died because it was trampled in the coop under a wood pallet. So they really aren't that responsible with firearms. Sad, sad, sad. Lynette's own words yet again about Jamie. Please don't get me wrong. I love her, but I've never known the real Jamie. Well, we've all figured out the real Lynette, haven't we? I can't. I don't even know what to say because I now realize that both times I've met her, she's been on meth. So I really never had a friendship with her. She asked me for money. I gave it to her. I don't believe that for a second. And I didn't realize that I was giving money to a rug addict. And now I feel sick in my stomach. Oh, so now she admits she has no idea who this friend is. This godmother of a child she's trying to protect.